So I'm running for this bus across the street. I'm moving full high knees because I ain't trying to miss it. It's actually stopped on the opposite side of the road. So I have to run in front of it to get on it. As I run in front, the driver starts to pull off. He sees me and then he smashes his brakes. So now I'm waiting at the bus doors, waiting on him to swing them Johns open, but he didn't. He just looked at me and I looked at him and he stared at me and I was like, he then opens the door and lets me have it. What's your problem? I could have killed you. Where are you even going? Here's the funny part. I, I got off at the next stop. I, I didn't even need to go far. My destination was down the street. I, I could have walked. I just, you know. Hi, I'm friend. My name is Johnny. This is No Lab Code Required, and this exists because the stuff that makes us healthier should not be confusing, false, or exclusively for people in lab coats. And exercise is actually the least important thing when it comes to fat loss, falling behind things like nutrition and sleep. But I wanted to make this episode before we address those topics because of the question we asked at the end of episode two. Do we need more muscle or do we need to use our muscles more for fat loss? Whether we're conscious of it or not, we're conditioned to believe that we need to simply move more to lose fat. We're taught that America's obesity rate is growing because we don't move as much as we used to. All these automated machines are making us lazy. We don't exercise enough. Our jobs aren't labor intensive. Yada, yada, rada. rada. Researchers analyzed CDC-led surveys that gathered exercise, health measures, and behaviors on over 3.7 million U.S. citizens and found there was low correlation between activity levels and obesity in the U.S. Another study took 5,000 plus participants, surveyed things like activity and BMI for 15 years and found there was no evidence that supports physical inactivity promotes the development of obesity. To some degree, we all believe that we're getting fatter and fatter because we don't move enough. And this is what we're taught but we're missing the mark. Quick history lesson, we weren't even exercising before the 70s. The public believed that exercise was for athletes and those in the military. This belief quickly changed in the 70s when exercise became a massive trend. You can ask your mama's mother. The most pivotal man to the rise of cardio specifically is Kenneth Cooper, who stated that according to the Gallup poll, 24% of American adults exercised in 1961. That number peaked to 59% in 1984. One of the most telling figures is the exponential rise of marathon runners that took off in the 70s. Guess what else took off in the 70s? Obesity. This is real. The period when we started to jog around and move more, we got bigger. Now, I'm not gonna say that the cardio boom just magically made us fat, but there's a disconnect here that we have to take into account. Going to the gym, trying to jog our fat off isn't working, but also sitting around doesn't make us fat. One of the reasons we believe we need to move more to lose fat is because of the implementation of calories. They're on the back of your food, big and bold on your cardio machine, on your Apple Watch, you can't miss them. Big industries will try to convince you that it's all about calories. They'll throw some calorie math at you till it's backward. But forget about calories because our metabolism doesn't adhere to equations. And remember, fat is just energy. We use most of that energy when we're not even working out. Now who was gonna tell you that? When we're simply existing on a day-to-day -day basis, we're using a lot of energy, burning a lot of fat, and going to the gym actually takes up a very small fraction of the total energy we use in a day. And this is why we have to put on more muscle instead of simply moving more, because our muscle is a direct contributor to what our metabolism is doing when we are sitting around. So let's clear this up. Who has more fat burning potential? Person one gets up, hits the gym, and does 45 minutes of cardio on a stationary bike for the sole purpose of burning calories, AKA, moving moving more. Or person two gets up, hits the gym for however long they want with the sole purpose of getting strong, AKA getting more muscle. Person one will have little to no positive fat burning effect on their metabolism after the gym session. Person two understands that muscle is the framework for their metabolism and having more of that will put them in a better position to burn more fat outside of their gym session because that's when they use most of their energy. The ultimate goal is to have a favorable fat burning impact on our metabolism and exercises that not only activate the muscle, but builds them is how we do that. Humans are designed to move, exercise matters, but three things, all exercise isn't the same, exercise is not even the most important factor for fat loss, and humans are more complex than calories in and calories out. Cut the cap. Cut the cap.